Hello and good afternoon. Hello to everyone and welcome to this fourth day of the Open Science Fair Conference. I hope you have enjoyed all these days, very busy days. Um, today, uh, this is a, a parallel session, so this is the Lightning Talk Session A. Um, and then just going to pass uh, some slides that maybe you have all all of you have seen this through these days just just some housekeeping rules um, for us to to be on the on the same page when when having this type of session so um, if you want to present yourself or address some question to the speakers please use the the chat to do so um, or if you want to ask a direct question to a speaker, please, at the end of the session, raise your hand or open your microphone and speak directly to the, to the speaker. So this session will be recorded and we kindly ask you all that during the presentations, you have your microphone muted. Uh, and of course, all the presentations and recordings will be available uh, in Zenodo and uh, in YouTube channel, um, the, the recordings also, and in also in Zenodo. Um, for social media, please use the hashtag OSFair 2021, or if you want to identify the the Open Science Fair uh, Twitter account, please do so and identify us in all your posts. Um, just a kind uh, uh, remark and remind for the Open Science Fair Code of Conduct that is available in our uh, website, the, uh, the website of the conference, and we kindly ask you all to have a look. Now, um, I think we can start. So uh, we will have uh, six presentations, and we kindly ask all the speakers to to be strict with the, with the time. For each presentation, you will have uh, seven minutes, and uh, at the last minute, I will open the microphone and just give a short warning to that we are um, closing to the end on one minute to 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 finish your time. So the the first presentation. Will be uh, uh, will be um, five data stewards per hundred uh, researchers. The development of a postgraduate certificate data steward at the University of Vienna, uh, presented by Teresa uh, Kalova. Uh, after that, Irina Dimitro will present open science related transferable skills for early career researchers. And then Eleni Macri um, will present um, uh, a presentation about an engaged research approach to design an open online course in open science and open innovation for early career researchers. Um, then we'll have uh, Irina, um, we'll have Anna, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll have Anna and Irena um, presenting um, uh, a building capacity for open science through training for institutional repositories. And then Ellen, Claire and Lina's best practice for online training. And um, the last but not the least, Lottie Provost will present uh, triple training activities on open science and uh, EOSC. So I hope you all uh, enjoy uh, this session. And um, with no further delay, I will pass the floor to Teresa Kalova to uh, start your presentation. Thank you all for being here. So Teresa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. We'll just try to share my screen. Um, does that work? Can everyone see the yes. slides? Okay, yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay, hello, everyone. My name is Teresa Kalova, and I'm a project manager in the project Fair Data Austria at the Vienna University Library. And today I want to talk to you about something quite exciting that we've been working on for the past six months, and that is the certificate course Data Steward.
So uh, today we will have a look at uh, some of the typical tasks of data stewards and the competencies they need in order to perform these tasks. And then I will give you some information on um, regarding the certificate course that we are planning. So why do we need uh, education or a dedicated course for data stewards? I'm uh, fairly certain that everyone here today is familiar with this quote by Baron Mons that we will need to educate about 500,000 data stewards um, in the EU alone in order to support researchers with the growing demand of uh, data intensive research. Data stewards can support researchers in various ways, but the most typical tasks of data stewards are providing support services and designing those services, uh, helping researchers uh, handling uh, their data and designing uh, RDM strategies, also uh, developing various uh, workflows and policies for institutional RDM. They also have a sort of um, bridging role in that they uh, translate the needs and requirements of researchers to the service, uh, to the services, to the support services, to the IT infrastructure. Um, they also develop and uh, deliver training, and usually they are quite active in, in various uh, national and international networks regarding uh, data management. So in order to perform these tasks, uh, they uh, need various uh, competencies. So you can see it's, uh, this is just um, a summary of some of the skills and competencies that data stewards need in order to be uh, successful in their role. Uh, they need uh, a lot of knowledge and professional competence, expertise in uh, regarding RDM, uh, data security, long-term preservation, but also methodological competence and competencies that are needed, such as um, curiosity, uh, creativity, and um, empathy, as well as willingness to learn new things. So the certificate course data steward that we are developing focuses largely on the professional competence uh, and partly also the methodological competence. Um, so the Vienna University Library has been offering another certificate course, uh, which is called the Data Librarian, specifically teaching RDM basics to librarians. But as the role of data steward um, requires further knowledge and further skills, uh, we have decided to expand the curriculum of the certificate course and also expand the target groups. Um, so we have largely been working with the results of the project Fair Data Austria, where data stewardship is one of the uh, main topics and also similar uh, further education programs to develop a new curriculum and a part-time um, training course, which can be used to upskill uh, existing staff, uh, but also to prepare new staff for the challenging new roles of data stewards. Uh, so uh, this is our timeline. As I've mentioned, we have been working uh, on the preliminary curriculum for the past six months. We have also conducted several feedback rounds with experts uh, for data stewardship and RDM training in the form of workshops, but also uh, written feedback. Uh, the plan is now to uh, choose a scientific director for the course and start the formal accreditation process at the university which we will hopefully complete in the winter months uh, so that we can start contacting uh, potential lecturers and trainers and uh, together with them uh, further develop the curriculum so that we can uh, offer the course for the first time next year. So the plan is for the course to take uh, two semesters and it is a combination of online uh, and contact classes as well as um, self-study. And the participants will um, finish the course with a certificate from the University of Vienna, which is equivalent to 12 credit points. The number of participants will most likely be um, limited to around 20 people. Sorry. 
Uh, so as I said, we want to expand the target group of the course. So we want to invite researchers, PhD students, but also uh, research support staff from various departments such as uh, IT or the library to take part in the course. And we, uh, when it comes to the prerequisites, we want, want it to be as open as possible so that uh, anyone from somebody who has a master's degree as well as a completed apprenticeship together with relevant work experience can take part in the course so, um, so that we can um, really, um, um, so that uh, various experiences are, are uh, kind of uh, mirrored in the course and we can bring together an interesting group of participants. So this is the way we want our planning to build the course that has four modules. They are all obligatory modules. First two are introductory courses uh, on the one hand for uh, it's an introduction to RDM data stewardship and open knowledge topics. One minute. And, uh, uh, thank you. And on the other hand, there's the basics of IT and data science. So these basic, uh, this basic knowledge and skills will then be further uh, delved into detail in module three with uh, fair data in the research data life cycle and um, all the knowledge that the participants will acquire through the first three modules will be put into data stewardship practice in module uh, four. So uh, as I mentioned, our next steps are choosing a scientific director, completing the formal accreditation process, choosing potential lecturers and trainers, and together with them further developing and finishing the curriculum so that we can have uh, the first round of the course next year. So that's uh, uh, everything from me for now. Thank you so much for listening and I'm excited to answer your questions uh, later. And please do get in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresa, and just on time. Um, so any questions you have to address to Teresa, please leave them in the chat or comments and uh, Teresa will try to answer them or at the end, if we still have time, we, we open, uh, do openly and exchange uh, opinions and, and comments if we, if we still have some minutes. So thank you. And now I pass the floor to Irina Dimitru. So Irina, you can start sharing your screen. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, hello and thank you, Paula and Andre. I'm Irina and I am here on behalf of a team from Eurodoc. And I will be talking about our work on open science skills for early career researchers. So I'll start by introducing Eurodoc and then by introducing our previous work on transferable skills in general before I go to open science skills and our findings. Uh, so Eurodoc, as you may know, is the European Council of Doctoral Candidates and Junior Researchers. It's a federation of national associations of early career researchers from European countries. And it's non-profit and volunteer and based in Brussels. You can find out more about who we represent and what we do, do at the website, which is here. And Eurodoc is actively working to facilitate transition to open science by helping to bring together policymakers and researchers. And these uh, efforts take place at all levels of the organization, but there is an entirely dedicated working group on open science of which uh, me and some of the other people working on this topic are part of. And Eurodoc also runs a program for open science ambassadors. So the open science working group aims to raise awareness about open science initiatives among early career researchers, to elaborate recommendations for universities and other in institutions, and to advocate for changes in research assessment, such that they align to the principle of open science. And the ambassador course that I mentioned is a course designed to train the researchers in key topics in open science, uh, with the goal of them being um, acting as ambassadors for open science in their own networks. And it was initially aimed for the members of the national associations that are part in Eurodoc, but now it's uh, um, open to everyone, interested researchers, policymakers, etc. So I promised I will tell you a bit about transferable skills first. They are becoming a very important topic in the discussion around doctoral training and other training for junior researchers. And in recent years, it's been recognized that early career researchers face a diverse employment landscape. 
on one side, academia cannot offer enough permanent positions for all PhD holders, and on the other side, uh, skills and competences that are um, developed through research in academia become increasingly valuable uh, in other sectors, such as the private sector or public administration. So it means that early career researchers must be uh, capable of early of um, uh, easily applying uh, the transferable skills that they have acquired in their training as researchers, and they also must be able to make a case that they have acquired these skills. So Eurodoc recognized this paradigmatic shift, and in 2018 uh, created a report on transferable skills for early career researchers, which uh, produced this matrix of, um, of skills uh, organized in nine categories. I'm only showing this here, don't try to read it, to show how many and varied the skills, the skills identified in 2018 were. And the goal of that research was primarily to help uh, early career researchers with assessing their own skills and then advocating or making a, a case to employers that they have these skills. But it fit into a greater um, paradigm of skill assessment, which is becoming increasingly um, important. And there were 66 skills um, uh, identified in this report and organized in these nine categories. And we could tell even back then that open, um, sorry, open uh, science in particular give rise to a specific um, set of skills. So we decided to work specifically on open science and open science skills. And we see our work as uh, fitting into a larger picture competences, which is the first key step for the European Commission towards addressing precarity and reducing brain drain. So we see our work contributing towards this. The method uh, that we chose for looking for open science skills, because we had to look for them from scratch to some extent, was that we took two courses, the um, uh, Foster course and the Open Science MOOC course, and we looked at their learning outcomes and extracted skills from them, which we then organized in accordance with, um, we used the definition of skills that we have uh, used in the earlier report as well, and we extracted skills from these two courses and organized them. And these two courses were chosen because of Eurodoc's previous involvement with them. Uh, Eurodoc was involved as a beta tester in these courses. And furthermore, the Foster course is part of um, the training for Open Science Ambassadors in Eurodoc. So it is familiar to everyone. We, five of us worked on this um, extraction of skills independently, and then we compared and refi uh, refined and corrected our list of skills. We then uh, organized the skills according to ESCO, and I will make a brief uh, detour to introduce the ESCO classification of skills. And this has three pillars, occupations, qualifications, skills, and competences. And furthermore, within skills, we distinguish between knowledge and skills, but we are interested in what else calls, calls general skills. One minute. Which are um, these eight, I will not read them out, but is to give you a flavor of the scope. And the, the skills that we have identified fit within these first five categories, the skills that we have identified as coming from open science fit within this first five categories. And we identified 48 skills. We, I gave here just a small sample. So you see this is the course, managing and sharing research data. We find the skill writing a data management plan, and then we see where it fits in the ESCO classification. Uh, organizing, planning, and scheduling work and activities is one of the, the skills there. Um, our conclusion was that the skills that we have found from open science contribute our, um, another strong argument in favor of introducing open science training. And the fact that we can map these skills easily to the ESCO definition of skills means that they will be intelligible to potential employers or to actors outside of academia. And they will also be, that will make it easy for the early career researchers themselves to talk about their skills. And here we have some 
future plans will uh, revise our report according to a new classification that ESCO is introducing this year. And we also intend to recommend open science courses to encourage open science training into the activity of institutions. Um, this is what you have been working for on, and this is what our plans are. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you to the organizers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, uh, thank you so much, Irina. Now we pass on to Eleni Macri. Um, Eleni, an engaged research approach to design an open online course in open science and open innovation for her literary researchers. So thank you all. Uh, well, let me first kindly ask you whether you are able to. Uh, I've shared my screen. Whether you are able to see yes. my to watch yes, my yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So. Uh, Thank you all. Um, on behalf of uh, Opening Doors, a EU-funded program under the Schaff's Grand Agreements launched in February 2021, and pleased to present an answer of an, our engaged research approach to design an open online educational course in open science and open innovation for early career uh, researchers. Our project is led by Denise McGrath, Assistant Professor, University College Dublin, including esteemed colleagues from uh, UCD, Ireland, Czech Republic and, uh, and uh, Denmark. The overall purpose of our project was is to co-design an online interdisciplinary, intersectoral, international educational course in open science and open innovation for PhD graduates and postdoctoral researchers, including support tool for PhD supervisors, aimed to shape more innovative, socially aware, integrative, and employer PhD and postdoctoral researchers. Our engaged research approach was followed uh, as far as conceptualization, deployment, and learning outcomes of the project's concern. As we are all are aware of, it encompasses the different ways that researchers meaningfully interact with various stakeholders uh, in any or all stages of a research process, from issue formulation to co-creation of new knowledge and dissemination. An engaged research approach were important for our project. Open science, open innovation, relatively new and broad terms, necessary to understand their meaning in diverse audiences cross-culturally, our goal was to design for PhD and postdoctoral uh, students and employers in open innovation networks and education institutions our course. And this means diverse needs and knowledge contributions requiring an engaged research approach. Why so important also a key element for open science involving sharing goals that's within different interests, considering ethical equity and power of smaller voices for PhD students and facilitating meaningful dialogue. The four key principles of co-design also involved sharing power, prioritizing relationships using participatory methods and building capacity across all stages of our project research and also deployment and dissemination. Our broad three engaged research strategies use stakeholder interviews across three countries, World Ireland, Denmark, and Czech Republic, World Cafe co design event, and also followed by industry check as an iterative process of design and validation. Collaborate uh, for, uh, uh, for PhD docs, educators, or within and between industry stakeholders involving PhD employers as well. The important issues for cross-nation stakeholder engagement, the interview guides, non-academic settings as a standard target group for PhD, especially in Dermanc, not the same in Ireland and Czech Republic, language translation and analysis. Our engaged approach in our online course, research data collection, the interviews with various stakeholders, employers and PhD educators across the countries, industry check and World Cafe event. The stakeholder interviews, 35 overall, 18 with employers, with PhD graduates, and also with PhD educators. The challenges encountered with analysis, the diverse expect perspectives between stakeholders' countries, how to synthesize this into learning outcomes for a trained course. The generic learning outcomes reached, collaborative and interdisciplinary research, practical applicability of it, realizing the value of involving the wider public in research, the use 
of open science approaches, values, and tools, and career planning. The World Cafe event, including also uh, many stakeholders and groups across different breakout rooms, and based on the topic from the interviews, we came up with the four actually kind of uh, uh, transferable and transversal skills related skills mentioned. The process evaluation of World Cafe dynamics, triggering reflection dialogue, of course, language and background issues, but rephrasing, summarizing the essential uh, uh, led, led to collaborative knowledge construction, Google Drive shared dogs collaborative of taking and facilitating uh, attendees' motivation and engagement. Uh, the work of learning outcomes uh, led to open online course drafted with the proposed course curriculum and learning activities circulated to employers and feedback and relevance to open science and open innovation. Interest to check in Ireland and Czech Republic involved many kind of advisory external industry and advisory committee, including non-academic employers. And we ended up uh, with the final curriculum proposal with engaged research approach, comprehensive and new understanding of open science and open innovation related transferable and transversal skills, led, leading to a flipped classroom challenge-based connectivist and constructive teaching and learning framework as far as our online educational course expected to be. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Eleni. It just finished before the time. Um, so I see the, that the chat is being quite active. So if you have questions to or comments or suggestions, please put them there and uh, the speakers are answering to, to all your questions. So let's move on to the next one to Anna and Irina. I don't pronounce the second names just to not uh, to, to give a bad pronunciation. So I give the floor okay, to- Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anna. Thank you, just a second. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. We are members from the uh, members of the repository development team at the University of Belgrade Computer Center in Serbia. My name is Anna Djarjevic, and I'm a librarian and repository manager. Uh, today, uh, we will show how the lack of specialized and institutionalized training on open science can be uh, mitigated through uh, training for using and uh, and managing institutional repositories. And uh, we will explain why uh, basically technical training on on repositories had to be expanded to include various topics and uh, skills related to, uh, to open science. Uh, in July 2018, the National Open Science uh, Policy was adopted in Serbia, and uh, this pushed academic and the research organizations to establish institutional repositories. Uh, the repository development team at the University of Belgrade Computer Center has played an important, uh, a major role in uh, this process. And uh, the team provides uh, provides a hosting and uh, software, but also training for uh, repository managers and uh, end users. And uh, this is done, uh, this is actually done by uh, a dedicated team for uh, user support. The user support team has to deal with some uh, very serious problems. Uh, the library staff at uh, research institutions is uh, insufficient and uh, naturally for some librarians, uh, repositories were an uh, additional burden. Also, uh, there is a huge knowledge gap uh, in Serbia. Uh, libra uh, librarians are usually not familiar with, um, with the with the concept of repositories and open science generally. And um, the reason for, uh, for that, I think that um, is the lack of institutionalized, uh, institutionalized training. Uh, as an illustration, let us uh, have a look uh, at the topics covered uh, by formal education and training pro uh, programs for librarians. This blue hand here indicates where they touch upon open science. Um, library and information science um, is studied at the University of Belgrade at the bachelor, master's and PhD levels. And uh, the curriculum, um, I uh, have to say that the curriculum is comprehensive and uh, diversified, but for now it lags uh, behind, uh, behind modern trends. 
Uh, also, all librarians must pass a librarian licensure examination. This is uh, this is traditional librarianship, except uh, for a, a very general introduction into information science. Uh, then we have certified professional development courses for librarians. Uh, cover uh, it covers some digital skills, but uh, the program is uh, is primarily intended intended for public libraries. Uh, so our team um, had to take. Uh, had to take all this into account when uh, developing the, the training on repositories. Uh, once the, repos the repository is set up, we, we, provide, um, uh, we provide training for the repository manager. The next step is training for researchers. Uh, initially, uh, training was organized in person, but last year we had to, to translate the whole program uh, into an online environment, and I dare say it with great success. Uh, training, uh, is, uh, training is seen as a crucial for infrastructure adoption, and uh, that is why the user support team grows at, at the same pace as the IT team. Uh, now, now my colleague Irena Nezic tell you more about core training. Hello, everyone. My name is Irena Nezic. I'm also a librarian and a repository manager. Uh, I myself have been trained by the user support team, and I'm a part of that team today. Our training program relies on a uh, train the trainer model. We train repository managers who are mainly librarians. Uh, they later manage repositories and they're supposed to be able to train researchers. So based on this, one would expect the training to be primarily technical, to focus on the repository software, metadata, workflows. Unfortunately, purely technical training didn't work for us because um, too many things were unknown to future repository managers. In order to manage a repository, one has to be familiar with persistent identifiers, RDM, dissemination of scholarly information through aggregators and search engines, etc. So this is why we had to broaden the technical part with other topics. And this diagram here uh, shows a brief outline of our training programs for researchers and librarians. And as you can see, many of these topics fall into the area of open science. Uh, the previous slide shows what we call core or formal part of the training, and this is something that goes with the repository itself. So uh, during these trainings, we talk about everything one needs to know in order to use and manage a repository. When users identify a topic they know nothing about or very little about, but is relevant to them. They know that they can turn to us for additional training and we teach them how to use different tools, how to use reference managers, uh, how to interpret information that they gather from Sherpa Romeo website uh, and so on. And, and this is the informal part of the training that we provide. And here you can see the most popular topics of the informal part of the training clustered around the concepts covered in the formal part of the training. Uh, so, um, uh, next slide, yeah, thank you. Uh, the skills that we cover in our trainings are here mapped against the scheme of open science skills for library staff and researchers developed by Liber Europe. So it is obvious that we significantly contribute to a development of a number of open science uh, skills. So um, uh, with 27 institutional repositories and counting, we have trained dozens of librarians, hundreds of researchers, and some of these librarians have started a workshop for researchers on their own. Uh, so the change is obvious, and we strongly believe that this model could successfully bridge the knowledge gap in other environments lacking institutional training on open science. But what about other open science skills? They're not likely to develop without institutionalized training. So we can say that the training model has been efficient so far, and we plan to build upon the core part of our training by adding new topics to it, and uh, we can also count on a number of repository managers who are ready to get involved in informal part of the training as volunteers. We already produced a significant body of training materials, but they have to be uh, revised and systematized. And finally, we also plan to make some steps towards institutionalizing uh, training for open science. While the library and information science curriculum is beyond our scope of influence, uh, designing a certified professional development course for librarians seems to be a feasible option. So please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Apart from me and my colleague Anne, uh, we have uh, 
our colleagues Milica Ševkušić and Biljana Kosmanović to answer all of, all of your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Irina and Anna, for your presentation now. Um, let's pass on to the next one with Linus and Nell and Claire, best practices for online training. So keep up on the on the chat that everyone is uh, active. So thank you, Irina. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make it wrong? No. Thanks, Linus. Okay, um, welcome to this talk on best practices in online training, uh, presenting activities from the EOSC Synergy project. My name is Helen Clare from JISC in the UK, and I'm presenting with Lina Shapinskas from Dance in the Netherlands. Next slide, please, Linus. First, to talk about EOSC Synergy. It's a project which involves implementing the European Open Science Cloud at a national level in our consortium partner countries which you can see listed on the slide. Synergy is led by CSIC in Spain and is due to finish around this time next year. We have activities around building infrastructure and policy alignment, as well as developing 10 thematic services covering earth observation, environment, biomedicine and astrophysics. And like most projects, we have a work package on training, which we'll focus on today. Next slide, please. One of our main training activities was to build a platform to host and deliver training. However, we wanted to do something beyond creating a Moodle platform, although we did do that too. Our research showed that open science trainers don't just use one platform or tool for training, they use several, and there weren't always open platforms available for them to choose. So we provided some generic open tools for things like document sharing, video conferencing, as well as some specific open science related tools such as an instance of Jupyter Notebooks, an infrastructure manager, which can be used to create virtual mach machines and training accounts, and a hackathon as a service. The platform is still a work in progress, but we'd really like you to take a look and let us know if you're interested in any of the tools. In particular, the hackathon as a service is ready for testing now. Next slide, please, Linus. In addition to the platform, we'd like to share our approach to developing training content which focuses particularly on sustainability and scalability in two ways. Firstly, our approach right from the start was to focus only on online training, and this was before the pandemic started. Secondly, we have a focus on a train the trainer approach. So apart from the content on how to actually deliver training, the training work package in EOSC Synergy does not produce any of other training material. Our role is to support other work packages deliver, who deliver the infrastructure and services to create their own training. The service teams are often new to training and particularly online training. So we've produced a range of material on creating good online content, including practical advice on design, formats, tools and delivery. We've been using some of our materials externally as part of data steward training, which I think Linus mentioned in the chat. And we've also now gathered our, advance, our advice, including forms, checklists, and real life examples into a practical handbook. Again, it's still a work in progress, but we'd really like to take you to take a look to see what you think, but also if you're willing to contribute your experiences in terms of what worked online and what didn't, please do. Next slide, Linus. Finally, to talk about the content on the platform. We already have some tutorials on our technical and thematic services, but more will be coming over the coming next year. The course we'd like to highlight today is one we created to provide an example of what good online training can look like. It also provides some reusable introductory materials, and I'll hand over to Linus to show you more. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be presenting uh, at today's uh, session. My name is Milan Shepinskas, um, and I would like to give you an overview of the online course that we developed. Um, it's an introductory course on open science, uh, EOSC, and research data management. And the main idea is to give a basic understanding of EOSC and open science to those who work with research data, so namely researchers, data stewards, and trainers. Uh, 
to give an introduction to key concepts and practical tools to make data fair, and also to give a more introduction to research data management and show some of the tools that are available uh, for achieving this. So this is, uh, this, these are some snapshots of the online course. Um, it's, uh, it consists of eight uh, modules, each complemented with a video of a duration of about uh, five, six minutes. Um, it covers subjects like open science, EOSC, research data management, and also uses examples from specific EOSC synergy thematic services that can be interesting to people uh, involved in this program. Uh, there are learning activities and resources complementing each of the modules. Each module lasts about uh, 30 minutes, including exercises such as quizzes, for instance. It's interactive. It has some forums where people can ask questions, uh, share uh, information. Um, it's self-paced, so one can choose uh, which modules to follow in which order and when. And it also has reusable content. There are PowerPoint presentations, videos, scripts, a full test of the course, uh, and so forth. So we invite you to have a look at this uh, course. We will share the links also in the chat. And also all materials are now available in Zenodo, including the videos. So feel free to reuse. Uh, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat or get in touch with us via email. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're, you still have one more minute and a half. <laughs> so if you want to demonstrate anything, so no, if not, we pass to the other and the last one. So moving on to Lotti Provost, uh, triple training activities on open science and EOSC. Okay. Hi everyone, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, of okay. yes perfect. Okay, hello, thanks for being here today. I'm Lottie and I work on the training activities related to open science and the EOSC within the Triple Project. So the Triple Project is an ongoing Horizon 2020 project which was launched in 2019. And its main aim is the development of a multilingual and multicultural discovery solution for the SSH. Uh, it will provide the single access point that allows users to explore, find, access, and reuse materials such as literature, data, projects, but also researcher profiles at a European scale. Um, what else? Yes, the Good Triple Discovery platform will be one of the services operas, and it will also be an SSH service of the EOSC. Now I'd like to tell you a bit more about why we found it important to dedicate a full work package to uh, open science and the EOSC integration within the project. Firstly, the EOSC was still under construction when our project, when the triple project was designed, and there was a clear need among the partners for more knowledge on open science practices, and also for improved exchanges and common work towards a shared understanding of the latest European open science advancements. We also wanted to ensure that the development of the Go Triple platform would be strongly aligned with the evolving standards of the EOSC ecosystem. That's why we decided to provide trainings in the form of webinars and to produce, adapt and reuse general and specific guidelines with three aims, being firstly to provide support to Triple members on open science and on the EOSC via adequate training, Secondly, to engage new potential audiences in Triple's events. And finally, to produce fair training materials and ensure their reusability by the general public. Now, I'd like to talk to you a bit about the targets of our training sessions, because the original intention was to address our events only to consortium members. However, we realized that some of the topics of the training sessions could actually benefit wider audiences and the scientific community in general. That's why we decided to open the training sessions to the community and started designing targeted training sessions. So as you can see here, you have specific tri triple trainings, which are focused on relevant activities for the triple project. So within this uh, category, we, for example, held this year uh, an event on the EOSC onboarding session, which was designed to provide assistance to service providers so to share services via EOSC with the EOSC portal and also to introduce some of the benefits of the EOSC portal. 
uh, next week on the, no, sorry, in two weeks, on the 12th of October, we'll be holding another event uh, on the EOSC architecture this time. And it will be a training session that will provide an overview on the main components of the EOSC architecture. And we'll also discuss interoperability issues in the EOSC architecture, for example. So you can see that these trainings are more specific. On the other side, we also design uh, trainings for the community and they focus on services and solutions. Uh, so for example, we organize a webinar on the open access publishing platform, Open Research Europe, in which we explain what it is and how it works. We then held a session on the EOSC state of the art and objectives to discuss the latest stages of the EOSC development and also changes in the EOSC governance, for example. The last session we held was two weeks ago on fair data in social sciences and humanities. And we talked about how research data in SSH is defined, why are fair principles important for the management of research data, and also how can we implement uh, fair principles in the social sciences and humanities. All of these trainings were organized in close collaboration with the main research institution in the SSH field and also with the training coordinators community. So you can see their logos here on the screen. Now, I'd like to share with you a few results from the activities that we've been carrying out. Uh, so activities in this work package included training sessions in the form of webinars in close collaboration with research institutions and training communities. Up to now, we've organized this year five training sessions two more are in preparation, and uh, with a total of 275 participants. Soon we're having our training resources hosted on Dalia campus, which will help us gain more visibility and help uh, interested people find all the training resources in one place. And we're also currently working with open air community of practice for training coordinators and the shock trainers community so as to produce a guide, uh, guidelines uh, on fair materials based on 10 simple rules. Finally, I'd like to say we've also been working with the ICDI, which is the Italian group dedicated to open science and the EOSC. And uh, we're also in close contact with the EOSC skills and training work group, so as to make sure that our training sessions are aligned. I think that will be all for me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Lottie, for your quick presentation. <laughs> so uh, I think we had a, key, um, a very good uh, session um, with um, a lot of experiences and a lot of ways to address these open science related issues in order to provide assistance and new skills, not only for researchers, but for support staff and for the data stewards you know, with, a, with some experience from postgraduate uh, courses. But um, apart from that, also uh, some experiences from projects uh, to where we see the developing infrastructures and learning platforms to um, make available all these training materials. So I don't know if anyone would like to um, pose some question. I see that the chat is um, main, mainly the, the speakers has addressed everyone. So I don't know if anyone would like to open your microphone and share um, your experience or a comment to any of the presentations you just so, sorry, there's a timer. So, if not, I think we can um, close the session. I would like to, in the name of the organizing committee of the event, thank you all for being here and uh, just give you the information about the next session that will happen at, let me just check the time, at 3.30, we'll have a keynote. So I'll leave here 
the direct link for the plenary session for you um, so that you can copy that and on time you can um, connect with us and to be with us until the rest of the of the event so once more thank you so much to all the speakers and all the the, the participants that stood with us for at least um, almost one hour and uh, we'll talk soon so thank you